Happy Friday. Woo woo. It's been a good day so far. I have been just really grateful for all the opportunities to speak that are coming to me lately. And I feel like today is the perfect topic because we're going to talk about how to use scripting for manifestation. Since somebody mentioned last week, when we were, I think it was last week, we were talking about collapsing timelines and stuff like that. And somebody said, we should talk about scripting. And I was like, we should talk about scripting because this has been something that is pretty big part of my own manifesting life. And the thing is, even if you don't believe in manifestation or you don't, you're not like it doesn't vibe with you for whatever reason, it's totally cool to go ahead and just be like, um, I'm going to use this as a prayer or I'm going to use this just as a journal. Right. So it, it can go hand in hand with many different belief systems. Also, um, happy spring for those of you in the Northern hemisphere. We have definitely sprung here in the Dallas area. It's like sunny. It's a beautiful, the blue bonnets are just like a carpet outside my office right now, as well as our entire backyard is like three and a half acres full of nothing but wildflowers. And it's so beautiful. It just gives me life. <laughs> And I feel like every season is my favorite season. It's like, I love fall. So happy fall to those of you in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, I love fall. I love summer. Winter is probably my least favorite, but there are a lot of things I love about winter too, like my birthday. <laughs> um, <laughs> and just that sort of hibernation and, you know, things like that. So, oh no, you're getting a snowstorm, Cage. I'm so sorry. We had thunderstorms last night. And everybody who was on my Twitch stream, I was like, can you guys hear that? Or is that coming from the game? But it was literally such a loud thunderstorm that they could hear it through my microphone. It was insane. Lindsay says, we've had negative 15 here at night in Northern Ontario plus snow. Yeah, false spring. Well, everybody here is kind of worried about the fact that it's you know, 80 degrees in Texas in March, because that could mean 110 degrees in July. So we'll see. I don't know that it always correlates, but we'll see how hot it gets this year. Nobody will be feeling jealous of my weather um, come July. But uh, one of the things that I used to script in my journals a lot, I have used scripting for a very long time. And we'll talk about like what that is and how you do it. Plus, I have a gift for you all today. And I have a giveaway. So this will be super fun. Um, I used to talk so much in my journals about I'm so grateful that I got to stand on this stage or that I got to speak for this group. I'm so grateful that I was able to share a message today that inspired someone or changed their life or whatever. And I used to script that all the time. Harley, you're in Scottsdale. I will be in Scottsdale in July, by the way, which it's probably going to be 110 degrees there as well. But I will be there. I'm traveling a lot this year. Um, I used to do that all the time. And now so much uh, opportunities are coming to me for speaking, almost so much that I'm turning a lot of things down. And it's like, oh, this is actually everything I always asked for and wanted. Right? It's just really cool when you think about how you can really create your entire life from just how you want to feel and what you want to experience. As long as you continue to believe that it's possible for yourself and you continue to open up that sort of door in your mind or break down the walls in your mind that tell you you're not capable of happening it. And I feel like scripting is one of the best tools to do that. Thank you guys for liking my red. I was going to, I was doing a, a speech today for story garden. I feel like some of you were there today and it was like a little summit thing. And I was doing a speech and I was like, you know what? I'm going to wear red today. Cause I'm just filling the red <laughs> and pink earrings, red and pink is my new power combo. And I love it. So it's like, if only I could wear these, but this is not, I actually do kind of like that as an earring, Angela, but I'm going to put this on my bag. Um, so yeah, I have, I have gifts for you today in the description box. You will find a link to a Google drive document with a scripting journal in it. And I'm going to show you how I made it because it was super easy. It took me like five minutes to create this for you. So you can download it. It's for like an entire week. 
it has seven just repeated spreads. So seven days of spreads. And then the final, uh, final page is just evidence. And we're going to talk about kind of what that means. Just a little, little evidence page here that your dreams are coming true. So you're welcome to use that. All you have to do is click on the link and it'll bring up the document. And from there, you should be able just to download it or to make a copy of it. And then it'll add it to your own Google Drive. Um, do not request to edit it because then, you know, that always becomes a problem. But just just download it and print it and you're good to go. Uh, I So here's here's basically what scripting is to me. Scripting is the process or practice of writing down what you want your life to be as if it was already happening, as if it had already happened or is currently happening. And part of the reason that this is so powerful is because a lot of times, so when I used to journal forever, like I was a journaler my whole life and it makes me so sad that my mom has all my journals. And I kind of, I, I've asked my sister before, can you please try to go and get all my journals from mom's house? And she's like, I can't find them. I think they're in the attic. So I may or may not ever get all of those journals back, but I had stacks and stacks like boxes of journals because I used to journal all the time, starting with my very first ever journal when I was five years old was a little Hello Kitty diary that had a lock and a key. And I actually wrote in that journal, mostly like scribbles and things like that until I got, um, <laughs> Nice to movie to get the journal. Let's do it. Let's put together a team. Who's going to be on my assembling of the team? Someone to drive, someone to like climb up. Like our house, the house I grew up in is log, a log house. And the, it's kind of like Lincoln logs. Anybody ever remember that as a, like a toy to play with? It's not, some log cabins are just like flat wood, but my log cabin is round you, it actually is telephone poles. My house I grew up in was made out of telephone poles. I think I've talked about this before that my dad bought them. Um, my dad built my house from scratch and he bought them from a telephone pole manufacturer <laughs> to build the house. And so in the cross sections, the two logs meet like this. And so you can actually climb up the side of the house I grew up in very easily because you've got these cross sections that you can work as ladders. So don't ask me how I know this. I did not. I was not someone who snuck out of my house very often. I did do it a couple times senior year, but my sister was really the one who would sneak out of the house a lot. But um, there were a couple of times my parents had a balcony off their bedroom and there were a couple of times I climbed up that balcony. So maybe we need a <laughs> to go recover my old journals, but I have like, I journaled my whole life. And a lot of times when I was little, I would journal about the, you know, complaints, like typical stuff, like <laughs> Diane, <laughs> um, typical things like, uh, this, I'm not sure if this boy likes me or I have a crush, you know, just like little kid things. I also did a lot of really what is essentially scripting. And I used to write things like, here's my budget for my apartment in New York city. And I'm an opera singer in New York. So I would be like 12 years old creating a fake budget for me living in an apartment in New York. Now that never did come true, but that's because, you know, long-term goals when you're 12 don't always align. But I did script the first time I ever went to visit Vanderbilt University campus. I scripted out what my life would be like freshman year. Oh, it's so much fun. I'm so grateful to have joined the band and to have a scholarship to Vanderbilt. And the freshman year has been so much fun. And I feel this way. And like, I just journaled those things over and over again, as if it was my real life, even though it was years until I went to Vanderbilt. But it's like, I just knew that I was going to go there. And it's such a beautiful campus, Jennifer. I love Vanderbilt campus. It is uh, like an arboretum because there's enough like different types of trees that you can actually take a tour of the campus because of all the trees. It's such a, it's such a gorgeous campus and it's in Nashville, which is such a fun city. And I knew the minute I visited there when I was 13, that I wanted to go to college there. And so I used to script it all the time and think about it. So scripting is really the process of taking what it is you want to be 
in your life, the things you want to manifest or the things you want to call in or the things you wish were true. It can be literally anything. It can be the way you want to feel. It can be the kind of husband you want. It can be the kind of life you want with your children. It can be the types of flowers you want to see outside your window or the amount of money that you want to make or anything along those lines. Hey, Janine says it's wet and windy today. I get a drench to the beach. Oh no. Um, your main character went there and taught a class. Oh, that's so cool. I did. I went to Vanderbilt. I was double major in music, vocal performance and English. So, um, and I was in the marching band and did all the things. I loved it. So I loved, loved, loved the process of scripting as a kid. And then when I became older, I didn't really script as much. I did more like affirmations. Like at Vanderbilt, I had a locker in the music school. And I would, when I opened it up, I had a whole list of things that was like as if it was my life. And people used to make fun of me about it, but I was like, this is me. And it was like, I'm so grateful to be a singer, like a you know, a soprano at the Metropolitan Opera. Last night was such a wonderful concert with the standing ovation and, you know, different things like that. And I really had been doing that so much, like different affirmations and things like that. However, when I got back into journaling, when I became a writer, really probably 2012, 2013, after I had Andrew, or maybe before that, I have to look and see, I got back into journaling. I had a whole stint of time, like a pretty big period of time where I did almost no journaling. I didn't really have any notebooks. I didn't even own notebooks. Like what is wrong with me? I think I had a gaming journal and that was pretty much it, but I wasn't journaling at all. And what I, st when I started journaling again, it was like morning pages because I had been reading the artist's way. And what I found is that I, I ended up just spending 15 or 20 minutes a day journaling all my complaints, like just getting out what I didn't like about my life. Like, oh my gosh, this is so frustrating that this is happening. I saw this, like a lot of compare, comparing myself to other people, being scared nothing's going to happen for me, being upset that I'm not following through on my dreams. It was just so much like, I know what Sarah without notebooks, can we even imagine? I, but I found that I was journaling a lot of complaining, like just chronicling all the crappy things about my life. And it really brought my mood down because I wasn't coming up with any solutions and I wasn't cheering myself on at all. I was literally just complaining all the time to myself and I just thought, why am I in such a poor mood all the time? <laughs> and then I realized, oh, I'm just being negative literally all the time. And so I stopped doing that, which made me stop journaling for a little while. And then I discovered this idea of scripting. And I also discovered tarot. I had known about tarot, but I mean, I started using tarot as a daily practice. And that became an amazing combination for me, using tarot as a spiritual tool for myself and a self-development, self-discovery tool. But then also um, I started using my journaling more as a way to talk about the things I wanted in my life and the gratitude I had for the things that were going well and not allowing myself to put in any negative stuff. And this became something that I, I, had to train myself to do because I specifically wanted for it to not be an ugly negative thing for me. Right. Um, oh, this is interesting. I didn't journal because I end up thinking of it as a record of my life. And then I have to explain myself to the defendants, descendants who will find it one day. Right. Or chronicling everything. Right. So the way I started looking at journaling instead was this sort of combination. So I got a five-year journal and this is I, I had a five-year journal, but this one that I have right now, that 2020 to 2024 is the most I've stuck with it every single night for five years, four years, five, this is the fifth year of it. And that is where I chronicle things. And I just put in, I have this much space, like three or four lines every day that I can chronicle and I don't complain. I just say, 
here's how my HB90 launch went. Here's how much, you know, what, how much we spent on dinner. And it's very boring in a way. It has some gratitude in it, but it'll be like, took Andrew to get his hair cut today. He's looking so grown up, like chronicling things that the kids are doing so that I can remember that for my memory journal. Cause I, I usually am way behind on my memory journal where I'm trying to kind of scrapbook. So I use that as like, Oh yeah, we went to Applebee's for dinner and we went out and played baseball or we had a game or, you know, whatever. So I remember that stuff, but it's pretty short amount of time or space to write it. And then I have my main journal that I use after that every night. It's part of my evening routine where I go in and I read a tarot card, usually just asking generically, like what, do I need to know about what's going on in my life right now? What's the message that you have for me? And then I will journal, but I don't necessarily do it every day, but I will journal just the happy things, the things I'm grateful for. And I actually had, I think I shared this year a few years ago. I had a one 90 day, I think it was 90 days uh, period of time where I said, I'm going to start. I actually should do this for Q2. I think I'm going to do this. Maybe we'll do a challenge for this. It would be super fun. So I should have brought it down. It's somewhere in my notebook closet, but I had an Erin Condren journal. And what I did was I made a collage of all the things I wanted to bring into my life of my goals for that quarter, just to try it out. And it was something like get, get to 5,000 subscribers on YouTube, you know, or something like that at the time, pay off this credit card, make $10,000, you know, whatever, like had a series of things that I wanted to do, finish this book. And I put a picture on there of everything as well as you had me a collage. I love it, Jenna. It had a picture of, of like representing visually the, the like six things I wanted to accomplish or whatever. And then with words, it actually said like, I have done this, I have made this, I've, you know, done as if it were happening in the present tense. And then every single day for those 90 days, I sat down and I journaled basically scripting. So we're going to talk a little bit about what that looks like. I should have grabbed it so I could give you examples of what it actually says in that journal. But the scripting for me was present tense, always positive language, infused with gratitude and infused with the feelings that I want to feel or that I think I will feel once I accomplish those things. So let's say the first one was 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. I would sit down on my journal and I would say, oh my goodness, it was so exciting today to look at my YouTube and see that I had 5,000 subscribers. That felt so accomplished. It feels so exciting. I'm so grateful for every single person that subscribed to me. Thank you so much, Universe, for 5,000. It just felt so good to watch that number tick over. And, you know, it's funny to talk about it because I just went to go check on the description to make sure it put the link to that journal and saw that this channel has ticked over to 11,000 um, since last week. Actually, I think it just happened today because I'd never had seen it at 11,000. And that feels so good. But I was doing this when I only had, let's say, 2,000 subscribers. So I had this image or this, I would call up the feeling of what it would feel like to have accomplished that. And it was something that basically felt achievable. It didn't feel like although you can, you can use it any way you want. But for me, the most effective scripting has been something that feels like it's close, right? So sometimes I'll script things like, oh, I love walking the red carpet. It felt so good to be there with the cast of my TV show. I will do that kind of stuff from time to time. But most of my scripting is more focused on like what I'm trying to accomplish this year kind of thing, uh, because it just feels more those feelings feel more accessible. So, okay. So here's my biggest tips on it. Number one, get a journal that you really, really enjoy writing in. So one of the, like the one I was using that time was an Erin Condren journal. These are also Erin Condren journals, and I'm going to give away one of these today on replay and one of them on live stream. Um, so we have, these are just Erin Condren. I bought a ton of these, we'll just say. <laughs> um, and they're just lined journals on the inside. And I've got pens that I'm going to send with them. So um, simply gilded pens that haven't been used yet. So this one will go with this journal. And this one, this yellow one will go with this journal. So I will choose a winner today. And actually, I think there was a way we were doing it during, is it streamyard.com slash giveaway? Now, let me see. 
<laughs> I think. Okay, choose a live stream. We are on it. Let's do hashtag um, scripting. Okay. So if you type in the comments, hashtag scripting throughout this, uh, throughout this live stream, it will add you. I'm going to make a new little banner. Comment <laughs> on the fly and comment hashtag scripting to enter the giveaway. And I'll, that way I can randomly um, choose a winner without having to like scroll. So you can enter. Yep, yeah, we've got 26 entries already. So, and then on the replay, whichever, whoever wins this will choose between the two. And then whichever one's left over on the replay, you can um, just leave a comment below with hashtag scripting in the comments uh, and we will give those away. Um, I won't do it right now, but I'll do it in a few minutes. So find a journal that you really enjoy writing in, something that feels fun, something that feels luxurious or like a special journal that you've been holding on to so that your brain connects it with like, oh, this is like really precious and, and something I'm really excited to use, something that will make you joyful every time you look at it. Um, the one that I'm currently using right now is this one, which is a little tiny little guy that is from uh, Sterling Inc. And it's so fun. Yeah, you just need to put it in once. It's only going to put your name in once. So I have been for the last week doing a little bit. I didn't know. I bought this at the beginning of the year and I wasn't sure how I was going to use it because I just I bought it just because I wanted to buy it. I had literally no purpose for it, but I was like, someday I'm going to find a reason to use it. So I've started scripting in this journal every day of evidence and of things that I want to bring about in my life. And it doesn't have to be something that's like five pages long. It can just be super, super concise. That's just like, oh, I'm so grateful for 10,000 subscribers or wow, it felt so good to have a hundred people buy my book today, whatever it is you want. So journal or pen that you like. And then one of the biggest, I would say, uh, is that passport size? I think it's passport size or like Build note size, personal size. Passport size sounds right to me. That sounds good. Yes, EC notebooks are on sale. They've been having their spring warehouse sale or whatever. And I just, it when I was doing, it was funny because when I was doing the Story Garden live stream, the guy dropped off the package for the Aaron Condren stuff. And he was trying to talk to me in the window because my like right beside me in that office is the window. And he was like, hey. And I was like, I'm on a live stream. So if you were on there, you might've seen me doing it. And he was like, yeah, but, and I was like, I'm just going to not look at you anymore because I can't talk to you. But George went out to get it and it's this huge box. And he's like, what is this? And I was like, it might be from Aaron Condren. <laughs> he's like, what did you buy? I'm like, we'll talk about it later. And then I'm like, shove it in the closet till, till later. Um, is this like a short version of five by 55? No, I don't, I don't really well, okay. So 55 by five is coming up with like a single line, right? Like I am so grateful to have gotten 10,000 subscribers, right? That could be something like, or it felt so good to hit 10,000 subscribers, 11,000 subscribers when it hasn't happened yet. So you put that manifestation out in the universe. So you could use it that way. 55 by five is a process of writing that down 55 times every night for five nights in a row. And so you, it could be similar to that, but there's no rule necessarily about writing it down. I think some people even do the like three, six, nine method. Is that what it is? It's like you write it down three times in the morning, six times in the afternoon, nine times at night. I've never done that one before, but I might try it. We'll see. But this is more like journaling more so than just a single affirmation. So this is like you get yourself into, and this to me is the most important part. You get yourself into the feeling of how would you feel if this was your life? And it can be something very specific, like walking a red carpet and you visualize like, wow, how good would it feel to get the phone call that they're making my, like, my book into a TV show. Like, oh my gosh, Amazon Prime just asked to buy your show for a million dollars, you know, or whatever. Oh, I doubt you can enter on Twitch. I don't know. I have no idea how that works. We have 89 entries. You can try it. 
It doesn't tell me over there if you can or not. But I won't know because it'll, you might see it if your name goes by when it scrolls. We'll see. Go ahead and try it. And if not, then enter after it's become, it won't tell you you've entered. It'll just, it's just counting it on mine. Um, but we do have 90 entries now. So we'll see. Um, so, okay. Sorry, I keep like bouncing back and forth. Get yourself into the feeling of that moment has just occurred for me. Or imagine that you've put on your comfy silk pajamas or whatever, and you're getting into bed and you're picking up your journal and you're going to journal about how your day went and what you would start your journal with as if it, that was your day. And so you say, it felt so, I had the best day today. Dear diary, <laughs> I had the best day today. I love the beautiful blue bonnets in the driveway of my brand new home. I love driving up um, from getting, picking up groceries in my brand new Mercedes G wagon, you know, whatever it is, but write it as if this was your life. So if like, you're trying to manifest, let's say, I wish I lived closer to my family and got to meet, get together with friends all the time. I feel lonely. I wish I got together with friends instead of getting yourself in the vibe of, I feel really lonely. And I'm sad that this isn't my life and complaining about it and saying like, I mean, sometimes we just need cathartic to complain. But in this specific journal, instead of complaining and saying, I'm so tired of feeling lonely and I wish I had more friends and I really wish I could go with my family, but here's all the reasons that's not going to happen. Instead, shift that into take several deep breaths, take out your beautiful notebook and think about how would it feel? And if you're, if you can visualize in your mind, I know not everybody can, but if you're good at visualizing in your mind and that's a helpful tool for you, imagine that you're driving up to your house and your parents live next door or that, you know, your best friend, um, you, you happen to move in with your best friend new, now is living next door to you. And you get invited all the time to go on these girls night outs. And you have all of this just team of friends and they all get, you all get together to do like journaling or writing together or plan. You all plan together every Sunday. Like imagine what you want that life to be like and get yourself into that feeling of like, I can see myself at that table with all our planner stuff laid out and all my best friends and we're drinking wine and we're hanging out and everybody's having a good time and the kids are running around back out back and you know, all of that. And it can literally be anything you want, anything you can desire. And don't think about the obstacles to that of like, Oh, but it's too expensive to move back to that city or, Oh, but I never make friends. Just let all of that stuff go and instead allow yourself to get in the moment of what if this was my life right now and release any negative feelings that come up. You can acknowledge them if you want to, but just release those feelings for this moment and think, what, what would this feel like? And then pull out your journal and just journal about what that feels like and put gratitude into it of like, I just got home from the most fun planner meetup we've had yet. All of my friends were there. We were exchanging stickers. We laughed so much. It was so funny. We had some really good music on and, you know, just whatever. And doing all of that kind of journaling of what it might feel like or do as if you were writing a journaling entry in your life. And you can get as specific or stay as general as feels good to you. Some people manifest better with really, really specific details like, oh, I wore my favorite blue dress to the planner meetup today and I had these stickers and I was using an Erin Condren planner and my hair was down, just grown all the way down to my, you know, butt, like whatever. It can be very, very specific or it can be really general of just like, it felt so good to meet up with my planner friends tonight. And you don't have to be gener like general uh, or specific about where you were or what was going on. It's just like, oh, this felt really good. And allow yourself to flow for as long as it feels good to kind of allow yourself into. It's kind of almost like a dreamlike flow of, oh, this would be good. And what you might find the more you do it is that you start to like continue to write down things that you don't even 
you didn't even know you wanted. So for example, you might start journaling something and then be like, wow, I didn't even know that I had a dream of having a pool in my backyard, or I never even thought about moving back home to my hometown and how good that would feel. Or I didn't even know I wanted to write a book. I was just going to journal about how good it felt to be reading something. And then before I knew it in my imagination, it was my own book I was reading. And it's like, this process is not just a way to dream about your future, but to sometimes actually discover what your future is meant to be. And that that is super, super fun. And I personally have also had experiences, which I know this sounds very woo woo, but I've had experience where when I was scripting, I had visions come to me that have then come true. And I have like actually seen things happening. And then in my life later, I was like, this is, I am literally standing in the moment that I saw as if I channeled it or as if I like, could see the future, but it was like, whether it what comes first, the chicken or the egg, I don't know. It could be either way. Did I create that or did it, was it meant to be, um, already? And I just saw it. So yes, many times. So yeah, it's, and I, I know it happens to other people. Um, and some people think, <laughs> that it's not uh, real, but it, you know, for those of us that have experience, it is, I know waiting for that taxi cab. It's like, and sometimes I do, I do wonder when I think about some of those bigger dreams that have been there for a long time. Uh, I, I do sometimes have my doubts of like, what if I've made turns that have shifted me away from that reality, which is possible that that can happen. But then I also try to remind myself, like, I have seen this vision and I know that it is meant for me. And I try to remember it. Um, yeah, it could be a tapping into Akashic Records, which I have done a session on Ak Akashic Records before that revealed some really, really interesting things. So we won't go into that. I feel like every conversation leads into a new rabbit hole in this, in this uh, coffee chat sometimes. When you're scripting, you can do long term or short term, by the way. So you could script about what you want your date night to be this Saturday. Like, oh, it was so, so much fun to go out with my brand new date this weekend. And he was so nice and, you know, all of those kinds of things. So you could journal about that. You could actually sit down every morning and script out how you want your day to be like, oh, at the, like pretend it's the end of the day and say, it felt so good to get this, this, and this, and this done. Or you can do very long-term things by saying like, gosh, by the time I'm 50, this is going to be my reality or, you know, whatever. It can be any of those types of things. Um, dear past me, your bank account and available storage space. Thank you for <laughs> stopping the shopping addiction on blank. Love future me. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, is it wrong to script my husband cleaning the house? Um, I, I, I honestly feel like you, you, it's hard to influence other people, but at the same time, I feel like you can script these things because I used to script all the time about wanting to have another baby. And George was very, very much against it. He was like, we had one baby. That's all we're going to have. It took so much heartache and pain to go through all these infertility treatments. And we're just not going to go through it again. And I really wanted another baby and I did not give up hope on that. So I was consistently scripting about our family of two and having a baby girl and, you know, all the way I wanted our lives to be. And even scripting out how I wanted to give birth to her and just like every little thing. And then one day George just says, you know what? I kind of do want another baby. And we were off to the races. It still took a few years to get her into our lives, but it was, you know, I could not have scripted our actual birth, our, our beautiful child more into my life. And whether it's like you want to look at it as law of attraction and manifesting, or if you're more on the spiritual or Christian side, you can also be thinking about this is a prayer. This is what I'm asking God for and, you know, asking him to bless me. So you can, you can kind of make it what you want it to be, whatever feels good for you. Did you script the hurricane? I didn't, but I did script that I wanted it to be quiet and peaceful. And because of the hurricane, the Charleston was evacuated. And so that was the only woman in labor and delivery. So it was like super, super quiet. So you could say in a way I sort of, <laughs> sort of made a script, like sort of scripted that in my um, journaling manifested it. So then in addition to the journaling, I also recommend, and Diane said something about this earlier and I um, didn't bring it up. Yeah. Synchronicities. Another thing that I 
really enjoy doing when it comes to my scripting and I find it very potent. And that's part of what I'm doing in this journal is writing down to do do with do 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 um writing down all of the ways in which it's coming true evidence signs synchronicities of things you want to be true in your life so for example if you really wanted let me think of a good a good one like let's say you really wanted to become a published author and you were going to um, start submitting your book to agents or something like that. You could start looking for situations in which your life is showing you evidence that that is your future reality. So if somebody randomly in a group, you write a beautiful Facebook post, somebody says, wow, you should be a writer. That becomes evidence of like, wow, I am a writer. I'm excited to be a writer. I'm going to write that down. Somebody thought I was a writer. And if it was, you know, then you're on YouTube or something and someone gives you these great tips for how to get an agent and they say, agents right now are really excited for XYZ and XYZ is exactly what you've been working on. That's another piece of evidence. And the more you keep track of that evidence and actually write it down and focus on like, wow, this is the proof to my subconscious mind and to the universe that all these things I've been asking for are actually starting to manifest. That is so much more powerful than looking around and being like, well, this person got an agent and it's not fair that I, I'm not getting an agent and I don't like my writing and nobody likes, you know, whatever. It's like, look for evidence because both things could be true. It's like you, you get to decide and, you know, it's up to you really how much you want to believe that the things you want you can create and go after in your life, or if life is just a uncontrollable circumstance and we have no way to choose what we get in our lives. I believe that we can create our lives. And I believe that the visions and the things that we desire are all things that are accessible to us. And even under the most like, cannot imagine it kind of circumstances, like nobody would believe that you could go from this life to that life. I mean, if you looked at me when I was <laughs> going through, uh, you know, some hard times with my ex-husband and a job I didn't like and smoking a pack or two of cigarettes every day and, you know, drinking wine every night and not taking care of my health. My house was a mess. Like going from that life where I just every once in a while had my electricity turned off because I hadn't been able to pay the bills. Like going from that version of me to this version of me is like two completely different people. But I was able to create that, right? Like I was able to step by step dream of something better and move to a better life. I had to take steps. Nobody just like lifted me out of that life and brought me into something different. But it is a, it's choices that I made and the choices I'm making now and the things I'm looking forward to for the future are only going to happen faster and more fluidly and excitedly if I choose to believe that they're possible for me and take action from a place of this is already who I am. And I'm so grateful I already have all of these things rather than a place of this is not fun for me anymore, or I can't do this, or I am not worthy of this. Like instead of a place of complaining, look for the, look for the places where it's going really well. And I know <laughs> that Sometimes we, especially in the manifestation space, we, we need to make room for sometimes you're not in a place in your life where you can get to a place of feeling good. Like those good feelings of feeling hope for the future are not accessible at all times. And that's okay. And it's okay to acknowledge that. And it's okay to be in a period of your life where you're just like, things are so bad. I can't get to a place of dreaming or hoping for the future. So I want anybody here who's going through that to know that you're seen and there's nothing wrong with you. Probably at that point in my life, when I was going through all of that with my husband, my ex-husband, I probably couldn't have seen it either. I wasn't journaling or anything back then, but it was just this nagging whisper. And then, you know, of course the universe burned my house down twice, but <laughs> there were a lot of, there were signs, there were signs I needed to change my life, but I, I don't know that I could have accessed any kind of dreams about the life I have now from that place. But bit by bit, as I took just the slightest tweaks of better action and better action and better action and started to listen to the universe, the more I began to see the possibilities for my life um, expanding. 
And so if you're in that place, just know that even just scripting, like it felt really good to get a good night's sleep last night. And I went for a walk today and that felt really good. Might not be true yet, but you're bringing yourself up to that place of like allowing yourself to imagine what a better day would be like and how your life could change if you got a glimpse of that slightly better life. So that really is scripting. What I have done for you. And oh, by the way, that 90 day journal, every single thing that I put on that 90 day manifestation scripting journal came true, except that I didn't get a book bub on my book and I ended up getting it the next month. So like every single thing came true and it was incredible. And I, I think I'm going to do it again. So in your scripting journal, you can find this in the description box below. There's a link to a Google drive. You just click on that link and then click download, or you can click make a copy or whatever, and you can download it and print it for yourself. But it's basically a two page spread that looks like this. So the first page just says manifest and attract. And at the top, it says three things I'm grateful for, which gets you into the feeling of gratitude. Like, oh, I'm so grateful for this. I'm grateful for this. And it gets your mind out of that complaining place. And then today's affirmation can be something about like, what are, it can be the same every day of the week, or it can be something different. Like um, for an affirmation, it could be something like, I am beautiful, or I am wealthy. I am abundant. Kind of like I am sort of statements or just... Uh, it could also be, for example, things that you're wanting to create in your reality. So one of the things that I've been working on is my audience and impact continues to grow even if I'm not posting. Because I've gotten into this feeling of obligation of like, I have to show up 100% energy all the time or my audience won't grow um, or nobody will like me anymore. And I know that sounds so childish, but it's just these old feelings that come back up that I'm trying to shift. And so an affirmation that I've been working on a lot lately is my audience and impact continues to grow, whether I show up or not, um, because I know that my energy and intention is good. And as the, like the times that I'm able to show up is enough, that's enough. Um, and then there's a place to put your card for the day and then also thoughts to meditate on. So if you have some thoughts that you're thinking of or things you're trying to work, work on, you can put it there. And then I'm currently calling in at the bottom is basically what are you currently trying to manifest in your life? Then the next page is just a little letter. Sorry, that's not showing up great. My It just says my scripting letter to the universe and it just has some uh, journaling uh, lines or whatever. So this is where you can write. Oh, so good to finally see that 10,000 or that 11,000th click over on my YouTube channel, just whatever you want. And you don't have to fill, like you have to fill the whole page, but you can use this. And if you don't want to use this journal, you can just script in a notebook, right? So it has that repeated every single day for seven days. And then the very last one is just that same sort of journaling page, except it says evidence that my dreams are coming true. So as you go throughout the week, any synchronicities or signs or evidence that things are happening for your favor or things are always working out for you, you just go ahead and put that in there. And then at the end of the week, you will have started to gather evidence that reminds your subconscious mind that all your dreams are coming true. Always. Things are always working out for you. Things always work out for the best or whatever it is that you're trying to bring into your life. So I'm going to show you real quick how I created this in case you want to create your own. So on Canva, let me remove this little scripting banner. If you go to canva.com, all you have to do to make your own, it's so easy because this wasn't even my like fully original design, right? You just would go into, I go to create a design and then I say custom size and I do eight and a half by 11 inches. If you're in Europe and you prefer A4, you can put in the dimensions for A4 and now it's not going to follow me to the new page, I think. Let me try this again. Present. So it opened a new tab. All right. So now you've got a blank page and all you have to do is over on this area um, on the left, it'll say design. And in here it says search templates. So if you search for manifesting, you're going to see all these templates over here on the side. Like this one is the one that I used uh, and I just changed it 
a little bit to make it like mine um, or like the one you have. Here's a vision board one or like a monthly reflections. So these are designs. Some of them you're only going to get access to if you have Canva Pro, if you're paying for it. But some of them, a lot of them are free. So you can just take any of these designs and you can use them for yourself. So like here's another manifestation planner. And if you don't like like this little leaf, you just delete it. If you don't like the background, you can just go over here into elements and you could put, well, I like pink gradient instead. And so you could come into photos. Oh, this kind of like looks like silk. You just drag it over and drop it. And now you've changed your manifesting planner to pink. And then you can click on any of these elements and go to this uh, little text color here. And if you wanted to change it to pink, you can just click pink and then click change all. And it's going to change all of those blue elements to pink. And the same thing, like sometimes with these little flowers or other things on it, you won't be able to change the color, but this one, it looks like you can change the color. So you could change that a little bit. So now you have this cute little manifesting planner. And if you were like, I don't want to do affirmations. Instead, I want to do my daily gratitude. So you just come in here and change this to gratitude. And then you can repeat that page by clicking on this to duplicate the page, or you can just click add a page and you can then design a, you know, a different page over here on the side. So that makes it super, super easy to create your own gratitude journal um, or manifesting journal or whatever. So over here on this page, if I wanted to, I could start with a blank page and go back into design. And if I wanted to just create a journal, you just type in journal and you can look over here, like here's a gratitude journal. And you could even do like, you could say journal cover, because you're trying to create a cover for your journal and you can say, Oh, I really like this one. And then the next page you can put in the journal page or journal lines or anything like that. And like, look how easy that is. Now you have a journal that you can create and use for yourself. So super cool. It's amazing. They've made it so easy and so accessible for everybody. So I love it. All right. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose <laughs> our winner for the giveaway so that you can choose which uh which planner or which notebook you want and then i'm going to pull up discord and see if we have like one or two minutes for questions because i keep just talking forever um all right so let's see i want to draw but i think i need to present and share the screen it's been a while since we did this all right so now we click draw and it's going to pick a winner. There we go. If you're on Twitch, see if it says your name. <laughs> That'll kind of tell you a little bit if it is, if it is you. Jenny E. Jenny, you are the winner of your choice of the white notebook or the rose gold notebook. So just let me know which one you want and... Um, then you can just email me Sarah at sarahcannon.com and let me know your address and I will send that out to you. Uh, put that in there. Pick the Hello Kitty one. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. And if you if you're on the live stream, you can still enter to win again. Just wait for this to become like a full time video after the live stream is over, and then go into the normal comment section and leave a heart or a hashtag scripting or whatever and I'll pick from those comments. Um, it'll be super easy. So let's switch gears and go into some comments, questions, coffee chat questions. There's so many questions pile up and I don't get to them all. Uh, okay, Elizabeth said, I think there was a lot of discussion on this question actually. I'm writing a YA book in the horror genre and I've written the first chapter and I'm happy with it, but it doesn't have any horror elements or even allude to the horror that's to come. Is this a problem? Should I add something that hints at it. Um, and I think a lot of people answered her uh, in the Discord, regular Discord channel, that, you know, you can have like a whiff of something like, oh, that seems mysterious. But for the most part, I think all readers expect the beginning of a horror book to be or any book to be like the normal world. So this is life before. But if you wanted to, like, for example, it's psychological thriller kind of thing, but um, Gone Girl, for example, starts with him like looking at his wife's head and thinking that he could crack it open. That lets you know right from the first line that 
there's this, this is the genre, right? So you might pick up some like 10 samples or something from current top 10 horror stuff in your genre and see if you can find some examples and how soon, like in that first little bit, 10% of the book, how soon are they typically letting in some horror elements? But I think a lot of times, like I just finished a YA horror and there's nothing horror or even close to it until we get to the act one climax. And I know it's going to be horror and I'm waiting for it, but it's all set up at the beginning. So I think it's fine. Again, Purple Yarns asked about the intro outro music for um, Coffee Chat. They didn't ask again. I just mentioned it again and I forgot to look. So I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. Albany says, question for Sarah this Friday. How do you deal with creative burnout? So this is definitely difficult. And I think that there is more to creative burnout than just um, regular burnout. Because a lot of times regular burnout comes from a mismatch of our expectations and our output. So a lot of times we're burning out because we're working too hard and not seeing the results we wanted to see. And there's obligations or things that we're doing that are not either fully aligned with what we want in our lives or what we want to be doing. And it's just draining our energy to a, such a huge extent that we can't seem to like refill it or we're not taking care of ourselves. And I think that when it comes to creative burnout, what's often happening is either the stories are just, we've been in the same world for so long, or we're not seeing the results we wanted to see. We're not excited for our story anymore, or we're just completely tapped out from all the other things in our lives and we're not doing anything to refill the creative well. So I think my biggest advice when it comes to that is Buzz Aldrin just stepped in your lunch. What does that mean? Um, I think that, uh, I think that it's really about figuring out what for you makes you feel rejuvenated and re-energized and giving yourself permission to take the space and the time you need to refill that well. And this is something that I started to realize pretty quickly when I started getting my morning writing in this year. I was like, okay, I'm going to dedicate myself to the time every morning. And then I started to understand that it's not just about the time, it's about having the creative energy to show up for my story. So in order to heal that, I have been spending a lot of time refilling my creative well. I've been gaming more. I've been trying to really set better boundaries with my digital phone and other use like that. Digital phone, my cell phone, my digital digital detox type stuff. And I'm going to do a pretty uh, more substantial digital detox coming up, but just looking for where do you need to set boundaries in your life in order to refill your creative well instead of constantly have it drained. Um, J.S. Wick says, could you talk about imposter syndrome? I've been battling it and I would love to hear your insight on the subject. I spent a year not writing because of imposter syndrome, then pulled myself out of it. But now I'm getting ready to publish my book, the one that threw me into it in the first place. And it has reared its ugly head once again, not quite as bad since I'm still able to write, but I am recognizing that it's starting. This is such a hard thing. And I know <laughs> the thing you hear people say all the time is imposters don't get imposter syndrome. And I think that is so true. And it's important to realize and understand is that, um, oh, the cat, the cat, sorry, I got it, um, is that really and truly, if you're feeling like you have imposter syndrome, you don't, you aren't actually an imposter because imposters don't feel like those are not the kind of people that feel like they don't belong, right? They're just people that are there. Um, and they know that they're like cheating people out of stuff or whatever, but you, it's a normal part of the creative process to be nervous about what other people are going to think. And mostly that idea about, uh, about imposter syndrome doesn't come from you most of the time. It comes from your fear of what other people will think. And so the fact that you're writing again, but you're getting close to the publishing is an indication that the it's the what other people will think fear that's rearing its ugly head. And so the biggest thing to work on, number one, is regulating your nervous system around this issue. And that means reprogramming, rewiring your brain when it comes to I don't deserve to be here. I'm not good enough. And all of those kind of thoughts, seeing if you can neutralize those thoughts and fears. So instead of like, when you start to hear this stuff of like, I'm not good enough, this sucks. It's no good. Nobody's going to like it. 
you have to immediately catch that in your brain. It's going to take a process, right? And it's good. Like you already are showing good like signs of that because you've noticed it's rearing its ugly head again. And so catch that before it takes over and start rewiring that in your brain of saying these daily affirmations, this daily thoughts, sort of managing the um, the physical response that your body has to thinking about imposter syndrome or not living up to expectations or whatever you can use EFT, which is emotional freedom technique or tapping that you see people do to kind of neutralize that. You can use breath work. You can use visualization, affirmations, journaling, all of those kinds of things. There's lots of tools out there, but just working on shifting that thought. So if, if you don't want to believe imposter syndrome, what is it you want to believe? And then focus on teaching yourself to believe it. Like I am good enough and people are going to love this book. Right. So you start putting that as your affirmation every day and you start looking for evidence. So like, I am good enough. Wow. I loved that scene I wrote today and start writing that down every time you have a good feeling about your work and building that evidence in your own mind about why you deserve to be here. Oh my gosh. Somebody just read a scene and they said they loved it. Somebody just read my blurb and they said they loved it. I really enjoyed this part. My beta readers loving this, like all of those things just continue to, um, build evidence in your own mind that you deserve to be here and that, you know, doesn't matter what anyone else thinks, right? Sometimes with imposter syndrome and things like that, you can also kind of neutralize it by saying, yeah, I'm an imposter. I'm not any good. I'm going to still do this <laughs> just by saying, okay, well, maybe I do suck and maybe everyone's going to hate this book, but that's okay. I'm going to write it anyway. And we're going to see what happens. Sometimes that can help, especially if you're somebody who struggles with intrusive thoughts of just kind of coming to terms with, yeah, that's probably going to happen. People are probably going to hate this book. It's going to be okay. I'm going to do it anyway. Um, so it just kind of depends on where you are on that spectrum. Um, so somebody else maybe can answer this, but C asks, what authors do you recommend checking out? I've recently discovered Bethany Adezada's YouTube channel because of your live with her. And I'm looking for more videos about the craft of writing and related topics. So you guys want to let me know who you uh, listen to. <laughs> um, craft of writing stuff. I mean, Brandon Sanderson has some good stuff on his YouTube channel. That's basically like what he teaches at Brigham Young that are, is really good. There's also some really good podcasts out there but so many of those are focused on marketing. So for me, it's like, I don't really, yay tells. I don't really follow a lot of YouTubers for their advice on, um, on craft, except I will say this, I would highly recommend checking out Leslie Penelope. So L Penelope, Leslie Penelope, you'll see her as both. She has a podcast called like my imaginary friends. I think it is. Um, and then Ines Johnson also is amazing because she breaks things down like from a screenwriting perspective. So she breaks down just incredible, um, incredible like Marvel cinematic universe and just all kinds of stuff like that. Um, so yes, Leslie Penelope, that's the spelling. I mean, KM Wyland is brilliant. And I, I have never watched her YouTube channel, so I didn't know that she had a YouTube channel. But she's incredible in terms of following her blog and everything else, like probably one of the most influential teachers of writing. But I, I tend to go for my craft advice more in podcasts and um, books than I do on YouTube. But you're seeing some other ad advice here. So like Brittany Wang, she talks a lot about writing serials and mini series for rapid release. Um, yeah, Abby Emmons is good. Abby Emmons videos tend to be a little bit short. Uh, but she has a massive following. So I don't know how in depth she goes on each of the topics, but if you're looking for just um, like surface level, you know, trying to learn a little bit about how to start a book or how to write a hook, I think her stuff is probably good. Um, Ellen Brock, Sasha, Bla well, Sasha Black is also incredible. I love Sasha Black. Um, she has a lot of really good books out there. So Jed Hearn, anybody else? Lots of good uh, examples there. And well, we made it partially through. <laughs> we made it partially through the, the questions. Um, but yeah, a lot of amazing people out there teaching craft. And one, one thing I would say about especially the people teaching craft, though, is try to follow people that have written more than one book, just because even, even a lot of the people that... I don't know. I don't want to get myself into a, a, 
bad situation because I don't ever want to criticize somebody. Like everyone has something important to share, no matter which area or how much experience you have. But I also feel like there's a lot of people out there that will say like, this is the way you write a book. And they've never actually written a book or they'll say, this is how you write a series, but they've never written a series before. Um, and that like KM Wyland, I think is probably one of the most brilliant teachers out there. But I sent her a message once and was like, I would love to see your take on how to do all of this in a series. And she was like, well, I would love to do that, but I've never written a series. And that kind of put a light bulb over my head for a minute because I was like, oh, like if someone doesn't actually have experience with something, they might not be the right person to be teaching it, right? So just kind of do your research about taking advice from people to make sure that they actually have experience doing the thing they're teaching you to do because it can be super helpful to um, actually have done it yourself, <laughs> which is why somebody like Brittany Wang is so good at teaching like the releasing of a mini series and things like that, because she's done it so often. Um, and there are some people that are really great teachers that haven't actually practiced things, but they're just really good at disseminating information and that's valuable too, but just, you know, maybe make sure that you're learning from people that have done the stuff that they're talking about. So that's it. Scripting. I hope that this little um, journal that I made for you is helpful for anybody who wants to use it. I'll post it in the coven and the discord server too, for anybody that is looking for that link later. And let me know if you decide to do some scripting. I think that I am going to set up a challenge for myself in um, Q2 as part of my goals to get back to a morning scripting practice in my new journal. So I think that'll be fun. Um, and if you decide to do it too, let me know. Um, oh, this is funny. I know what you died last. I know that you died last summer. That is actually really clever. Pretty Little Liars meets the Vampire Diaries. That's sometimes how I pitch similar to Beautiful Demons. So I'm, I would be there for that story. Um, I know that you died last summer. I like that. That's very good. I like it. Okay, guys, that's it. It is Friday and it is time to say goodbye for the weekend. I hope you have an incredible weekend. My hope, and so anybody doing camp, if you're doing camp as a writer, uh, a new video and workbook will be going up tomorrow for that. So look for that on my YouTube channel and over on Heart Breathings. And then next week, maybe we'll be closer to a release date for Vanessa Shaw. It's coming. We're getting there. I can't promise it's going to be next week, but I'm trying to get there before April 1st and have it up for pre-order. So thank you for your patience, your continued patience on waiting for that book. Hopefully it will be amazing. Next Friday, there will be a coffee chat. We will be here and yeah, it's almost April. All right. All my love to you guys. I will see you. I hope you have an amazing weekend and I will see you next time. Bye. Oh, I keep forgetting about my outro. I have an outro. Here we go. <laughs> see you guys later. Mm -hmm.